Hi everyone, I'm here with this week's happiness strategy. And this week the theme is all around looking at how we can stay standing in our truth around difficult people and circumstances. You know, it's easy to stand tall in who we are and to stay true to who we are when we're surrounded by other like-minded and like-spirited people. The same is also true. It's easy to feel at home with who we are when everything around us in our lives is going smooth. But it can be a much different picture and story when we are presented with those difficult and challenging people. And I know you know the ones that I'm talking about. They're those people in our lives where we can feel unhinged around within the first few moments of being in their company. You know, they're the people where we can recall that thing that they said or that they did and we can immediately feel the heat begin to rise. You know, there are trigger people and they're in our lives for a reason, but it's still hard to stay true to who we are and to stand tall in our truth sometimes when we're around them. You know, it's, it can be challenging to stay on our highest path when we're around them. And the same is true with different challenges and obstacles and circumstances that we're presented with in our lives. You know, as well as the daily going ons around the world, you know, the different injustices and tragedies that we see unfolding around us every day. You know, it can be hard to know where we fit in to the big picture of it all and to know how we can help and how we can stand in our truth um, and not become disheartened um, by the different injustices around us or to lose our faith in the magic of life. And so, you know, I, I think the question really comes down to how do we hang on to who we are and to hold on to who we are in those moments where it feels like everything around us is falling apart? And, you know, I think it's really helpful to begin becoming really clear on what it means to you to stand tall and to, to hold strong in who you are, to hold on to the truth of who you are. And I like to look at um, staying true to who I am as being firmly rooted who I am. You know, much like an old oak, a wise old oak tree is firmly rooted in the ground. You know, because a wise old oak tree is firmly rooted in the ground no matter what sorts of elements and storms and things are unfolding around it. Um, you know, the tree is still a tree regardless of what's happening around it. You know, those different elements and storms just become a part of the tree's history and story. Um, you know, and instead the tree kind of sways and moves with the winds and the storms and life, knowing that its roots go so much deeper than what's happening around it on its surface. So, you know, if it's helpful to view yourself and to view your truth much like being rooted to the ground, much like a wise old oak tree, then, you know, do that. Um, and if not, um, I do have a few um, helpful practices and things that I turn to um, when it, standing in my truth feels really hard and challenging to do. Um, so if they speak to you, you know, give them a try. Um, the first one is connection. So, you know, our humanity is the common thread that connects us. And yes, it connects us to even those difficult, challenging people, <laughs> even though it would be so much easier to just pass the blame or to say you're always going to stay away from them. You know, I don't believe that's the case. We're always going to be presented with different challenges, um, different challenging people, different um, difficulties in our lives. And, you know, kind of the greater the challenge, the greater the storm, the greater the triumph on the other side and the greater the growing and the learning and the adventure. Um, so it can be helpful to begin to view those people and circumstances before us. Um, and we'll look at the people, you know, to view them through our human lens and, and to look for our similarities rather than to be focused on the disparity and, and how we feel when we're around them. Um, you know, and if that's doesn't feel right to do, then don't. And if it feels challenging to do, then don't. Um, you know, another thing that you can do is just to kind of breathe into your own humanity and to, to give yourself that space where you see yourself with all of your strengths and your weaknesses. And to just um, really know that you're worthy of standing strong in the truth of who you are, no matter what kind of challenging 
circumstance or person is standing before you or that you're in. Um, you know, and it, it is helpful to begin kind of getting used to and to practicing that idea of looking at those challenging people and circumstances as kind of strange little gifts put in our lives, you know, wrapped up. I like to look at it as like strange little gifts wrapped up in weird little bows. You know, they add color to our lives. We don't know exactly why we're being presented with them, um, but they do add um, a bit more <laughs> color and adventure um, along our journey. Um, so just to remember that, you know, that connection piece, that we are programmed for connection and um, instead of always feeling like we have to push those difficult people and circumstances away to um, either just give a, ourselves that space to view them in a different light or to kind of give ourselves that tool of like just wrapping ourselves in that protective layer of like knowing that we as the person, as the human being, we are worthy of standing in whatever it is that's before us. Um, and then the next um, tip or helpful way that I like to turn to um, when I am in kind of a storm or when I know I'm going to be presented with or be in the company of, of somebody that I find more challenging to be around um, is to create different rituals. Um, and so again, this is going to be personalized to each of us. Um, and the more personally meaningful we can make our rituals, the more helpful they're going to be. So, you know, it's great to get really clear on what it is that um, brings you a sense of like joy and lightness and hope. Um, and to even create a list around um, what those things are, you know, whether it's like being out in nature or um, maybe it's something that you say to yourself, you know, a mantra. Um, I like to um, kind of, you know, the quirkier the better. I like to like wear something like a, a jewelry piece or, or something on my body where, you know, I can see it and feel it and touch it when I'm in the company of, um, you know, in a challenging circumstance or around somebody, a difficult person. Um, and that just helps to remind me to breathe. And I can, you know, touch that piece of jewelry or just look at it and remind myself to breathe and to hold space. And holding space could be about holding space for that other person um, to just show up um, however they are, whether that's messy or offensive to me, to just allow that person to just be um, without feeling myself attaching to any of it, just to hold the space. And at other times it can be a reminder to hold space for myself, to kind of put that protective kind of barrier or light around me um, to feel like I'm held and, you know, to feel like I'm protected <laughs> in those kind of shark infested waters. Um, so for you, you know, just look at what kind of rituals that you could create, you know, that are personally meaningful to you and, and to really get to know yourself and to know, um, what your triggers are. I think that's really important, um, so that we can kind of be a little bit proactive and we can create our own resources and tools that we can draw on. Because when we begin seeing ourselves as being resourceful, um, then it becomes a lot easier to, um, to not only become accountable for our own, our own happiness, but to draw on those tools within us to kind of weather those storms. Um, you know, and sometimes those tools are to reach out to those people that we know that we can trust or that we can share a laugh with. Um, so it's not always just um, soldiering through the storms on our own, but it's really knowing ourselves, knowing what our triggers are, and um, having some quirky little rituals and, and weird ways that um, you're very familiar with and that you can um, kind of bring up on the spot. Because often when we're triggered, we're not in the like a super self-reflective um, state. Um, but if we have these different tools and things that we're used to kind of practicing on a regular basis, then it becomes second nature to draw on them and to help to kind of tap into them during those challenging times. So I find like breath is a really good one and, and creating those reminders um, to breathe <laughs> because when we're in those states, it can be you know difficult to, re to remember. So just create as many, create as big, as vast of a 
of a toolbox as you can for different resources and weird ways and rituals um, that you can use on the spot. Um, and then the third way is to tap into our humor. I think, you know, of course we can't just laugh everything off and not everything is laughable. Um, but I know in my life when I'm faced with those different challenges um, and moving through those hard places, I have a few really solid friendships and, and people that I can turn to um, that aren't going to judge me for using my humor and that get it um, and that will engage me in that and, and we can share a laugh because sometimes that is the best medicine in the moment is just to share a, a good hearted um, and a good spirited laugh with somebody who gets our humor um, on the spot, where we don't have to explain ourselves or the backstory, where we can kind of just let go of the seriousness of it all. Because often when we're in those challenging places or we're presented with those difficult people, it can be hard not to become overtaken with the seriousness of it all and the heaviness of it all. And so, you know, I think that humor is um, a beautiful way for, you know, unlocking the truth of who we are and to um, kind of just ease up and, and just sort of shelf and, and, and just let go of the seriousness of um, the moments that we're in. So, you know, I hope that these tools are helpful. So connection, creating rituals, and, you know, tapping into humor. Um, you know, give them a try next time that you are feeling like you are in a challenging circumstance or moving through a storm, or just get used to kind of practicing um, these ways and seeing yourself as being amazingly resourceful, um, that you can, you know, weather the storms in life. and and to know what those, um, of course we can't predict <laughs> the different triggers and things that come up, but to know your usual triggers and to um, tool yourself up and to go in um, a little bit padded and um, to kind of have your own back too. I think, you know, to just really become accountable, when we're accountable for our, our own happiness, um, we're not, it is empowering. We're not waiting for outside things to um, fulfill us or to guide us. Um, we really lead our lives from within and, and we um, really understand that tapestry and, and you know, the goings-ons in our inner world and it becomes easier to um, know what it is that we need on the spot and, and to know who it is that, um, that we can turn to. Um, so I hope that you have an amazing week um, and I look forward to connecting again soon. Thank you.